Okay, the other day I was sanding on the pipe stone on the belt sander and I collected some pipe stone dust and I figured I could use it as a paint pigment so what I've got here is egg yolks, water and I've been mixing it up a little bit ahead of time just to see if it would work and it seems to be producing a good paint and all I do is I just mix it by eye on the brush I just dip back and forth I don't worry about being too messy with it it's, it's not going to be fancy type artwork just a bands of color on the wood on the laddles and uh, I'll show you what it looks like after it's dry. And one advantage of pipestone pigment is that it will not fade because it is a mineral pigment. It'll stay the color that it dries. Now the egg yolk paint or tempera paint dries very quickly and it shows brush strokes and it can get kind of lumpy I'm trying to create a nice smooth edge but I'm not seeming to be able to on this this is a pretty rough <clears throat> piece of wood here I have all I did was scrape the bark off a while ago it's a piece of oak I guess if I wanted some really nice smooth edges, I would have sanded this beforehand, but right now it's kind of fuzzy, but it doesn't matter. All I want to do is I'll, I'll, I'll show you how this looks like after it's dry. All right, so that's the um, pipestone pigment. This is just a regular wipe to clean the brush. I'm going to do some other, two other colors here. I've got some iron oxide pigment. Some people call it red ochre, but it's this is chemically produced iron oxide that you can buy online. Uh, you can buy red ochre also, of course, but <clears throat> I find that the artist colors or the artist uh, websites <clears throat> offer some very good iron oxide pigments and you can get them in yellow too and they will not fade so if it gets too thick I just add a little water <clears throat> to the side and let it drip in a little bit just mix it by eye <coughs> Allergies are acting up again. <clears throat> okay. So this looks a little bit darker. Let's see. It's a little bit too thin. <clears throat> This is a very soft bristle brush, and I prefer to use soft for this kind of work because it allows you to flow the paint onto the wood. <coughs> if it's a little bit thin, you can kind of gob it on better with a soft brush. Okay, so you can see that's a little bit darker.
And on the artifacts that I've seen that have paint, the paint is rather thick looking. So either they made the paint with egg yolk or some other thick binder. And uh, you don't have to use wet egg yolk, you can dry it, save it for long periods of time and then just add water to the egg yolk later on and reconstitute it. Now this is lamp black. <clears throat> you can also buy this from art supply stores. I get all my stuff online. Uh, I like Blick Art, Blick Art, Art Supplies and Materials. I think that's what it's called. You don't need very much of this. A little bit of lamp black goes a long way. It's basically soot. And uh, if you look at other YouTube videos on <clears throat> how to create tempera paints, uh, they have a lot better advice than I can give you on how to mix them, how to protect yourself from the dust from some of these pigments. Uh, the pipestone pigment, I think, is the only thing here that contains silica. Although, you know, it's not good to breathe any of these. If you're only going to paint a few arrow shafts or at little shafts at a time, it's probably not a really big deal. But if you're going to process your own pigments, you do have to watch out for the dust. And what I mean is, if you're going to create your pigments from the belt sander by taking a piece of rock or something, and then like I did with the pipe stone, <clears throat> I might show that on video. You know, you just as you're shaping the stone on the sander, the sander blows the particles and dust to one side. And I just held a, a gallon Ziploc bag on that side, and then it all just kind of went in the well, most of it went into the bag, and I just. Uh, after collecting it, I cut a hole in one of the corners and put the dust in a smaller bag. So this is all the dust I had from shaping that at lateral weight. Okay, so I was kind of happy it worked. It's working as a pigment. Not kind of happy. I am happy it's working as a pigment. And if I come up with, um, or if I find another stone. For it lateral weights that has an interesting color, I'll try the same thing. I'll collect the dust after shaping it. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm just going to use the egg yolk straight for a yellow color. Although it's probably not going to show up much on this wood. Yeah. It's not going to show up too much or too well. So it would be better to use a pigment. I do have a, a yellow oxide pigment. Same place I got the iron oxide. Kind of went overboard. I got like three or four egg yolks in there. I didn't need that much really. Yeah, much better.
So in the southwest, the red and black are predominant colors. And then the uh, second most common color would be the brown, the colors would be browns, yellows, and I've seen uh, some greens, but usually you'll see red, black, yellow, and brown <clears throat> on the southwest style arrows. And you can mix these two and get a different look. Let's see. I think I'll mix some of the iron oxide and lamp black. See if I can get a brown. It's kind of an olive color. I didn't expect that one. This is a kind of an olive color. Let me zoom in closer. Well, it's more of an umber, I guess, not an olive. So this was the pipestone pigment here. It's dry now. Same with the uh, iron oxide. Very close in color. The pipestone is a little bit lighter in color. It's not gritty at all. I was I'm surprised it's not gritty at all. So yeah, straight off the belt sander. I didn't filter it or anything. You know what I mean? I didn't strain it or filter it or get any of the colors. I mean, get any of the grit out. It's just straight off the sander. Now I imagine there would be some heavier particles down at the bottom. If you know you shake it like this a little bit, the heavier particles will go down here. So that's why I'm taking the dust off the top. Okay. So that's it. Looks pretty good, I think. See if I can get it into better light. So that's what I'll be using for painting the atlatl. This paint will go over the top of the wood and some of the sinew wrappings. I'll put some of this on the foreshaft. I'll also do some engraving or uh, grooves into the atlatl foreshaft. just to identify it, you know, put, put some personal identifiers on it. And um, whatever else I can think of using this paint for. I might paint some of the atlatl itself too. I don't know if that was done in the past. I don't remember seeing an atlatl with paint on it. as an artifact. I don't remember seeing an artifact with, you know, an atlatl with paint, but it might be, it might be historic. So I'll just stick with historic examples. I'll put, um, I'll paint some replicas exactly the way I think they were painted, trying to match the colors off of the uh, photographs and all that kind of good stuff. But for this first set, uh, some a lot of it's guesswork because it's very old uh, a lot of the artifacts don't exist, or that it's too old to get a good uh, pigment coloration off of the artifacts that do exist, you know, that kind of thing. All right, I just thought I'd show this.
That's it.